as we know, in 1953, the father of the UN Genocide Convention, Dr. Raphael Lemkin, the man who coined the term, himself described the famine as part of a genocidal attack against the Ukrainian nation. So if the father of the UN Genocide Convention, if the man who invented the word genocide feels that the famine was indeed part of a genocidal campaign launched by the Stalinist regime against Ukraine, who am I to disagree? It's clear that in the world today, there are many countries that have yet to recognize the Holodomor as an act of genocide. Canada has, but it's actually not true to say that the United States or the United Kingdom or Germany or virtually any country you can think of have joined in. In part, that's because some of the West European countries are so sadly tied to the Russian gas teats that they refuse to do anything that might uh, offend Mr. Putin, the KGB man in the Kremlin. Um, so they play coy with this. They talk about the catastrophe in Ukraine, or they talk about uh, starving people in other parts of the Soviet Union in the 1930s. But the fact is that the Holodomor was uh, a genocide focused in on Ukrainian lands. Uh, the borders of Soviet Ukraine were closed. Information about the famine was not broadcast. Relief was refused. Stories that came out were suppressed or denied. There was a, a cover-up campaign that lasts to some degree to the present day. Most people will appreciate that the greatest single source of disinformation about the Holodomor came from the pen of Walter Durante, the New York Times correspondent, who was based in Moscow during the famine and who did his level best for reasons that are still not entirely clear to confuse the public about what was happening in Soviet Ukraine and indeed in the Soviet Union more generally. But it's very clear that Durante was in cahoots with the Soviet regime and would challenge anyone who dared speak the truth. There were those who told the truth, Gareth Jones. He told the truth about the whole of the war as soon as he left the Soviet Union. And for that, he was pilloried. He was essentially driven out of his profession um, and died under mysterious circumstances. That it was genocidal and that it cost several million lives in Soviet Ukraine in 1932-33 is clear. The exact number is not known yet. It is a question for scholars and particularly demographers to resolve or dying in the space of approximately six months, 1932-33. Now, if you think about that, if you think about that number, four million people, and that's probably slightly on the low side, four million people, Raphael Lemkin said five, by the way. Uh, if you think of four million people dying in six months, that is a genocide unparalleled in European history. Now, of course, I know immediately some will say, well, what about the six million Jews who were murdered by the Nazis? Of course, another genocide and a horrible one. The numbers, who knows? Does it really matter that much? But really it's the people who died that really mattered. My godmother was a survivor of the whole of the war. It's what she experienced. It's what the people in her village experienced that really matters. And it's their memory, the memory of those who did not survive, the consensus is among serious scholars, demographers, political scientists, historians, and so on, that the whole of the war was genocidal. Uh, and clearly this is, is something that the world now needs to recognize. Hopefully uh, before the 90th anniversary is commemorated next year. Why should the world recognize the whole of the war as a genocide? If that's the question, the answer is very simple because it's the right thing to do. Today, the entire world has recognized the Holocaust as a genocide directed against the Jewish people. This is not to deny that many millions of non-Jews were also murdered or enslaved by the Nazis, but the focus of the Nazi terror, as long as the Nazi regime lasted, was on Jews. And so when we talk about the Holocaust, the first victim group we think of naturally are the Jews. So we remember, we say, never forget the millions of Jews who perished under the Nazis. We've also remembered the Roma, the so-called gypsies, right? 
the Jehovah's Witnesses, the disabled, the homosexuals, the prisoners of war, the Ukrainian nationalists who died at Babanyar, for example. We've remembered all those people because it's the right thing to do. These were innocent people or people who stood up and fought against tyranny. And so we remember those lives that were needlessly snuffed out, those families that were destroyed, those communities that were throughout Europe and including in Ukraine. The relationship between some of those communities wasn't always positive, that's true. But I think we all now in the 21st century remember and hallow all of them. In the very same century, knowing what we now know about the whole of the Moor, that millions of people perished, that millions of people perished in Soviet Ukraine in the course of six months, that the truth about the famine was covered up, that Soviet Ukraine's borders were sealed, that there were generational consequences. Some of the great countries of the past, the United Kingdom, which was the, was the superpower in the 1930s, we don't think of it that way anymore, but the British knew about the famine and deliberately covered it up. And today in 2001, Decades later, we have the United States, we have the United Kingdom, we have France, we have Germany, we have Italy, we have Israel, we have the Vatican, none of whom have recognized the Holdemore as an act of genocide for fear of offending the KGB man, the KGB man in the Kremlin, Mr. Putin. Imagine that we live in a world where the governments of liberal democracies are still reluctant to identify the whole of the as a genocide because they don't want to offend Moscow. That some of these countries that knew the truth at the time and covered it up will do the right thing by finally saying, hey, the whole of the happened and it was genocidal. This isn't about revenge. This isn't about reparations. This is about doing the right thing.